So welcome back from the break. You are watching We Run TV on Quark One series. So we stop at question twenty-eight. Now we are on question twenty-nine, and the topic is inflammation. Inflammation is just a protective response to get rid of agent causing cell injury or consequences of such injury. What is an exudate? An exudate is any fluid filters from the circulatory system into lesions or areas of inflammation. So to the question. A man complains of itching and redness in the buccal area that appeared after shaving. Hmm. Vesicles filled with transparent fluid are observed on the hyperemic buccal area. What kind of fluid is in the vessels? Already know what an exudate is. So, morphologically, I will give you the types of exudate that we have. We have one, serous. A serous exudate is when the fluid exudate resemble, resembles the serum or is watery or is clear. In other words, it is transparent. Fibrinous exudate. It is when there is fibrin content of the fluid exudate and can be cruporous or diphtheric. Cruporous or diphtheric. Purulent exudate or suppurative exudate. It is when there is formation of pores in infection with pyogenic bacteria. We also have bacteria, uh, hemorrhagic kind of exudate. This is when there is vascular damage. Then we have cataral. That is when the surface of epithelium in case of inflammation produces increased amount of mucus. Alright, so what kind of exudate are we talking about in this area? But before that, let me just explain what a transudate is. A transudate is an extravascular fluid with low protein and a low specific gravity. It has no nucleated cell count and the primary cell types are macrophages, lymphocytes and mesothelial cells. So with a description, of all these things, the correct answer is serous exudate. Serous exudate. Because it is clear, it's a transparent fluid. I observe. So, answer is E. 30. Autopsy of a man who had died of cruporous pneumonia. That's a clue. Cruporous pneumonia has shown opaque fluid in the crural cavity. There was also a membrane of gray content on the viscera pura. What kind of inflammation has developed on the pura? Mm, of course, fibrinous. So the exudate in fibrinous can be what cruporous or what diphtheric. But this is fibrinous. So answer is B. 31. On the third day of diphtheria. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about fibrinous. Okay, a four-year-old girl died of diphtheria croup. The autopsy has shown taking edematous dull mucous tonic of the larynx, trachea, bronchi, and a grayish membrane, and a grayish membrane that could be easily separated, separated, covered the mucous tonic. Name the kind of inflammatory process. Of course, we are talking about fibrinous. So that's S D. 32. Autopsy of a girl who died of asphyxia has shown what the mucous tonic of trachea and bronchi is covered with white gray membrane, white gray, that is loosely connected with underlying tissue and can be easily removed with faucet. It can be easily removed. That's a clue. And of course, the fact that it is gray. So it is fibrinous, right? Good. Now, the lumen of the sedimental bronchi was filled with quirky gray white masses. What kind of tracheobronchitis does the exudation indicate? Now, of course, we have already agreed that it's a fibrinous. But fibrinous contains two types. We have what? Crupus and we have what? Diphtheric. 
Now, Krupos form can be removed. Whilst in diphtheric form, it cannot be removed. Hence, our answer is what? Krupos. 33. A five year old girl fell ill of diphtheria. Mm -hmm. In three days, she died of asphyxia, resulting from diphtheria croup. The autopsy has shown taking edematous, dull mucous tonic of larynx, tracheal, bronchial, covered with glories, maybe that can easily separate it, of course. That can be easily separated from the mucous tonic. What information is indicated by such morphological changes? Of course. Same question, don't I see? Of course, it can be separated. 34. A man died of shigellosis. Mucous tonic of large intestine is pretoric, covered with grayish membrane, gray membrane that can be hardly separated. That means it cannot be removed. So what kind of information is it? Or exudation is it? It can't. So it's E. It's E. 35. A 28-year-old patient has considerably enlarged pretoric painful tonsils. On their surface, there are solid gray membranes that spread to the hard palate and are tightly connected with underlying tissues. Tightly connected. It can be removed. An attempt to separate them leads to bleeding. So what morphological process determines this? Of course, the hysteric form. So the answer is what? A. 36. Spongy and cortical bones of the tibia in different areas are in the state are in the state of destruction. Cavities which have already appeared are filled with creamy masses of superior color. Creamy mass that is pause. What is the most possible form of inflammation? So if it is pause, we are talking about what? Separative. So the answer is A. 37. Autopsy of a 47-year-old man who died of pulmonary heart failure has shown a cavity filled with pus in the left lung. The wall is scapuloid uneven presented by pulmonary tissue. Diagnose the guy. They say this what? Pus. So what do you think? Now, definitely there's an abscess. Of acute form because the necrotic mass is central but in chronic it has both internal pyogenic membrane medium granulation tissue and external that's fibrous tissue membrane so your answer is D don't forget yeah it's D now these ones no relation but correct answer is D it can be chronic 38. After an operative intervention of a patient that's burn disease under the condition of severe organism reactivity decrease, a sepsis advance led to death. Sepsis advance, sepsis is your guy. In the area of the anterior abdominal wall, the diffuse infiltration of intermuscular space, sedimental, leukocyte, tissue edema, and muscle fibers. Lysis are microscopically observed. Define the kind of inflammation. Now, this is sepsis. Now, with sepsis, it means bacterial intoxication. Hence, there's pus. Now, what is a phlegmon? A phlegmon is a diffuse, prevalent inflammation. And there was a diffuse pus infiltration in the question. Diffuse infiltration. So, our answer is what? Phlegmon. It cannot be diphtheria. No, it cannot be abscess. It cannot be nucleus. It cannot be cataract. Don't forget it's what? Mucus. Okay. So, 39. A patient complains of high temperature, dyspnea, and pain in the right part of the thorax. During the prorac tapping, 700 ml of yellow green creamy fluid talks about what? Pulse, exactly. Define the, the, define the disease. 
So yellow green creamy fluid is what is pores. Now, there's a terminology here that you need to understand. This term called empyema. Empyema is actually a prurient inflammation of serous membrane. Hence, the answer is pura empyema. It is not fibrinoids. It is not serous. It is not carcinomatosis. Neither is it hemorrhagic. It is what? Empyema. Pause formation in the pura cavity. That's it. 40. Autopsy of a man who died of sepsis has shown a femoral inflammation of the pura bone of the femoral bone that envelops the marrow, Havitian canals, adjacent soft tissues, and periosteum. There are also multiple abscesses under the peri peristium. Define the possible, the most possible pathological process. Usually, usually sepsis is of acute form. Miss that. And if not treated, it now leads to what? To death. Hence, our first answer could be what? Could be acute. And why it cannot be chronic hematogenous osteomyelitis is because of sepsis. So our answer is acute hematogenous osteomyelitis. Osteoporosis simply means bone loss which becomes weak and can even break when it falls so our answer is acute hematogenous osteomyelitis All right so let's go to 41 we're right, dealing with what proliferative inflammation that is when there's what regeneration and the thing is coming to heal 41 during the Ultrastructural examination of biopsy material, there was detected an increased amount of lysosomes. You see, ultrastructural, many what? Organoids. So, lysosomes in the cytoplasm of microphage that forms the inflammatory what? Inflammation. This is evidence of, of course, phagocytosis what? Activation. Don't forget, lysosomes do what? They digest or they destroy. And if a lot of them are found in the macrophages. It means a phagocytosis has been what activated. So the answer is A. 42. During the histological examination of a 24-year-old patient's skin, biopsy material, there was detected a caseous necrosis surrounded by lymphocyte infiltration you see lymphocyte infiltration with single giant cells connecting tissue enlargement and the vasculitis what kind of pathological process is it now giant cells are always of chronic granulomatous what inflammation chronic granulomatous what inflammation so our answer is A, productive granulomatous inflammation. Now, example of this granulomatous inflammation or giant cells, specifically, include Langerhans giant cells, which are arranged at the periphery like horseshoe ring. We also have foreign body giant cells, which are usually central. So. Just take note for your information. Now, autopsy of a dead 60 year old man has shown a great number of white nodules of corn size in his lungs and liver. Microscopically, there were detected many granulomas mm -hmm, cells, with a focus of necrosis in the middle. On the periphery of the granulomas, there were what, epithelioid, lymphoid, plasma cells, macrophages, and a great amount of what? Langerhans world cells, which dominates in. Infiltrate. What granulomatous is it? I've already explained to you that this in is an example of what giant cell. So your answer is E. Forty-four. Microscopic examination of biopsy kidney material has shown a focus with granular eosinophilic masses in the middle. In the middle that were surrounded by 
lymphocytes what infiltrate epithelial cells and single perigroph longer hand cells what particular process is it i've already explained to you if you see giant cells don't think much go for what granulomatous what inflammation so answer is a 44 is a Forty-five. A forty-six-year-old patient complained of heavy nasal breathing. In the thickened nasal mucous membrane, biopsy material, biopsy material revealed what? Nucleic cells. This is your guy. Nucleic cells. An aggregation of epithelial cells, plasmocyte, lymphocyte, hyaline spheres were detected. What is your diagnosis? And you see nucleic cells, you go for what? Rhino scleroma rhino scleroma rhino scleroma for those who care to know is just a chronic granulomatous condition of the nose and other structures of the upper respiratory tract the respiratory tract the rest you can just google it yourself or you go through the material and you see explanation to almost all of them 46 in the nasal mucous membrane, biopsy material, epithelial cells, plasmocyte, nucleus cells. Come on, it's the same thing. So the answer is E. 47. A patient who complained of dyspnea had nasal mucous membrane biopsy done. The diagnosis was made rhinoscleroma. What cells? Mm, of course. If it's not there, then it's here. So it's what? Nucleic cells. So the answer is C. 48. A 40-year-old man had hyperemia and edema of skin in the neck, in the neck region. In the course of time, a small pyogenic abscess developed there. The focus is solid of yellow-green color on the cut surface. White grains can be seen in the prolonged mass. Histological examination showed fungus juices, plasma, and xanthoma cells. Macrophages indicate macrophages indicate the most possible kind of myocosis. Of course, your answer should be actinomycosis. This is a long-term infection that causes sores or abscesses in the body's soft tissues. It was first thought to be caused by a fungus, but a family of bacteria called actinomycetacea causes it. Now, fungus juices, plasma, and xanthoma. Xanthoma means irregular yellow patch cells. Macrophages are very typical of actinomycosis. So, that is why we will go for actinomycosis. Cosis. Sporo trichosis is actually a fungal disease of the skin. Aspeculosis is also a fungal disease infection. Candidiasis is also a fungal infection caused by candida. So basically, that is it for that. Now, number 49, now we're moving to immune associated processes. This place, I love it so much. But that's hypersensitivity reactions. So, 49. During the treatment of a 39-year-old man, patient with prurient proprieties, he had infiltration anesthesia with ultracane with adrenaline solution done. Suddenly, hyperemia, skin edema with blisters, and itching appeared. What kind of hypertensivity does the patient have? Of course, because of this, there was itching and blah, 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 blah. So, what you know about anaphylactic? That's what, that one, actually. Because it's immediate type. So the answer is B. Question 50. Question 50, which might be my last for this particular session. Question 50. During the histological examination of a man who had bron what? bronchial asthma for many years, bronchial asthma for many years, and had died of suffocation, a great amount of mucus with eosinophils in the lumen of Bronchios and small bronchi. Inter alveolar septa 
sclerosis and alveolar lumens dilation were detected what mechanism of repetitive reaction is it always know that asthma is always of type 1 hypersensitivity which in this here over here our answer is what raging reaction another term for type 1 hypersensitivity so your answer is a so guys if you have still not subscribed to our channel kindly do so recommend to others let them get it the earlier you prepare the better don't wait for it's too late enjoy bye for now